hello guys welcome back into my another video tutorial where i will discuss how you can use the firebase database in your android application this is the version of the firebase libraries of the 2.5.2 so it is later use but i want to highlight some things on this particular library so here is the tutorial adding the firebase client android to your android application for the database and here are the steps for that one so the first step is for this one is the set up the firebase sdk for your android project so first of all you have to configure the root level of the build.gradle file of your particular dependency so make an android project go into the root level of the build.gradle file and add this particular line over there class path com.google.gms google service 3.0 3.0.0 so here is the one that is the root level of my dependency and i have created this one i have added this particular services in my this particular file so that is what the first step now the next step is now the next step is adding the app level builder reader file for the particular library so you have to add this particular library compile.com.google this particular library compile.com.firebase firebase client for android 2.5.2 this tutorial i am only addressing the 2.5.2 version library it is not above this one so it has updated right now to the 3.0.0 and it has the some little more configuration instead of this one so add this particular line in your dependency so in the app go into the dependency and add this particular line that is what the this particular line now at the bottom of this particular file you have to apply the plugin that is what the com.google.gms google service so it will apply this particular plugin whatever we have configured in the root directory tool in that one and you have to add this particular section the packaging options exclude the multi internal license license firebat.txt and notice in your particular android directory so inside this particular android directory you have to include this particular section for that one now this is what the configuration to add the firebase sdk in your particular android project and just synchronize these particular gradle files and it will synchronize it with the firebase sdk and after that you have to register this particular application in your firebase console see so open the firebase console register your project to the firebase console and get the google services.json file from there and put it into the app directory so let's head back to the firebase console actually i have already configured my this particular project and that is what i am just overviewing this particular concepts so whenever you will configure the new project over here it will ask you for the project name that you have to give the particular project name then it will ask you uh, for the particular application for which you want to configure your project either it is the android either it is the web or either it is the iphone so for the android application you have to select the android then it will ask you for the particular package name that is what the our package name so here i have my configure my package name over here then it will automatically give you to download this particular file google service.json file and it will also head you whatever step that i have told you before that how to integrate this firebase sdk in your particular android project it will also guide you for that one so you can download this particular service file and that file you have to include in your app directly so go into your project properties and here inside the app you have to paste your this particular google services.json file over here it contain a lot more a uh, lot of the information regarding your particular project info number firebase url the project id storage bucket is also there and lot of configuration detail so you don't have to worry about that one you have to just paste that particular file in your app directory <coughs> now the next thing that we have to do so we have to find out that particular vr 
performing on the database so go to the database tab and copy the link for the database and create a config class and define a string with the copied value so in your particular project what we have to do you have to first copy this uh, you have to go into this database section from this database section you have to copy this particular link so just copy this particular link go into your project create a config class that is what the config class and create a static string that is what the final string with the help of this particular url that will link to the data writing of your particular firebase project so this is what the configuration and the next thing that you have to do it defaultly contains some other kind of a rules that it needs to be authenticate that particular user but we are just heading for the tutorial of uh, just a simple data writing so just modify your particular rules like this one so rules equal to read true and write also true so any user can read and any user can write on this particular database so that is what the configuration and that is what the next steps i have already write it over here and also that will add the permission to read and write from the any one of this data base and not this is rule is set like this for only practice purpose and it's not need to set uh, it, sorry it's need to set the different for the your application because you have to define the rules for the authentication also so only the authentication on only the authenticated user um, from this section can be able to write and read the data from this particular database so that is what we think now the next thing is create a person class with the two field name and address and empty the constructor add the getters and the setters for this field so for this particular purpose i am just writing i am just getting the two fields from the user that is what the name and address of a person and that thing i am going to write to this particular database so for that you have to create a particular class with the fields name and address create an empty constructor and create the getters and a setter the functionality of the android studio is there whenever you will place the alter insert it will open the particular window that will help you to include any of this particular thing so getters and setters are also there getters and setters both are also there so this type of thing is also there so the next thing modify the activity layout as required so here is my activity layout we we'll close some layouts over here yeah here is my activity layouts i have just taken a one to edit box where i will take the name from the user and i will take the address from the user and a one button that will send the data to that particular database on button click and on button click also those data will be fetched over here in this particular text box that is what the text view person so whatever data i am going to write it from over here i have a listener i uh, we are going to create a listener that will listen to that particular event and it will fetch the data from this particular database and display and display it back over here so that is what our scenario so this is what the layout that we have to include so that is what these steps modify the activity layout <laughs> the next thing we have to work on the main activity so this is what the main activity file <coughs> So first of all create the private reference to that particular fields next after the on create method inside that one after setting the layout set the context of this particular application so write down the firebase dot set android context and pass on the context of this particular activity so it will set the context for the firebase <coughs> create the instance bind it, bind them with the find UI id now whenever user is going to click on the button what we are going to do we are just fetching these values from the edit text and we are storing back them to the database so getting the value from values to the store so get the values of the edit text into the strings name and address then after create the firebase object with the help of the firebase reference is equal to new firebase config dot firebase url creating the person object person person is equal to new person that is what the new person object will be created adding the values person dot set name is equal to name set name is equal to address storing the values to the firebase database so this is the one single line it has the reference of this particular firebase this is what over here object dot child so it has the url a url up to our 
database so that is what the url up to our database and after that particular database we have a one particular object that is what the person <coughs> so this is what reference url to that database dot child person dot set value equal to person so it will set the value of this particular child equal to the value of the user inputted data so it will directly reflect the database values over there now whenever the data will be added to that database so that is what the event listener for the real time database so we will give the reference of the firebase reference dot add value event listener so whenever the value will be added over here the event will be generated inside your application so add event listener that is what the new value event listener on data change get the data snapshot from this particular database and for the data snapshot post snapshot 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 dot get children getting the data from this snapshot is it uh, equal to the get the data from that particular snapshot so person person equal to post snapshot that is what the post snapshot dot get value of this particular person class so it will get the value of the person class from this particular reference of our database and then we are just going to store that particular value over here in a particular string so string name equal to person dot get name this will give the person object from the database of our firebase database and it will have the values equal to these two things so that is what the person dot get name will give the name and person dot get address will give the address and that value i have displayed in that particular last section that is what the text view person dot set text equal to string so in our activity main i have this particular section which will display this particular line <coughs> and it has the two method that is what the on data change what you have to do it will handled over here and on cancel you can just write down that or you can toast also the read fail the firebase error message in that one so that's it and the last thing that you have to do is uh, after the modification add the internet permission to the android manifest file so in our android manifest file you have to include this particular permission that is what the internet permission for this particular project so that's it that is what the procedure so modify this particular context and now just run your application <coughs> wait for the few seconds until the cradle build will complete its task and will it install the SDK on your particular device or the emulator i am working with the particular device so it will directly run on my device as you can see over here is the particular activity that is uh, running in our application and whenever i am going to change from over here let's say the add row developers and I will write down the address let's say the India and whenever I'm going to click on the create it will reflect back these particular two things into the our firebase database so this is what the particular database on the real-time database on our firebase console and here is in the application that i have done this particular two things and in your application you can also see that the two values are get over here so now i am going to change these particular values let's say the name equal to the pull week and the address equal to the gujarat so that's it so this is what the real-time database whenever you are going to change uh, do the changes in your application it will directly reflect to that particular database and also from this particular database you can change this particular concepts okay so you can also change the values from over here you can set that value like uh, this way and it will directly reflect back in your particular application 
as you can see over here in your application it has reflected back that particular data in this particular section so this is how you can use the real-time database of the firebase sponsor so thanks for watching this video and please comment back for the end queries and please subscribe to my channel for the latest video tutorials on the firebase with the android application thank you very much